now that we have already seen in the earlier video how we can develop how we can set up visual studio environment on our machine in this particular session i am going to demonstrate the first dot net application for which let's start with go to start programs go to visual studio 2012 express edition visual studio express for desktop open the software and we have to start always with going to file and a new project and here you can see these are the different templates which are available visual studio windows edition desktop edition supports visual basic c sharp and c++ by default we want to develop our applications in c sharp so select c sharp we have got two types we can do windows or simple te unit testing alone is supported here but these are the different types of projects which we can develop using windows version windows forms application wpf application class console based application class library basically four types i would like to start with creating a console based application and here we have to give the project name i'm going to explain to you very shortly what is project what is solution what is the relationship between them and so on so here we are supposed to provide the project name let me also clarify one thing for those who have got visual studio professional edition here you will have have an additional option through which you can actually change the dot net framework version express edition does not give you that facility visual studio express edition you can only develop applications for dot net framework 4.5 whereas if you have visual studio professional edition you can develop using visual studio professional 2012 you can develop using framework 1.0 uh, sorry you can develop from framework 2.0 2.3.0 3.5 or 4.5 any of the versions you can select from the drop down which would be available in visual studio professional edition if you have you can try alternatively right now we are anyhow working with express edition so we give you a project name let's say hello world demo app and then this is the place where we have to provide the location of the folder so i am going to save all my project in c colon win d colon windows i am going to create one folder called as windows samples and in that samples i would like to prepare all my projects so here you can keep projects in case you want or you can remove this your choice and then here we have the option of create directory for solution i'll explain what is all this just select these options for the time being so i'm now unchecking this i don't want a directory for solution so i repeat i started file new project selected here c sharp windows console application and gave some project name click on okay doing so creates a project now if you already have this environment set up fine alternatively go to view solution explorer and come here this is the solution explorer this is the solution and this is the project and under the project we have a file by name program.cs so what is solution what is project a project is always a part of some solution so always on top in the hierarchy is a solution solution is supposed to have a file with an extension sln and then under solution we actually work with multiple projects and the project file will be .cs proj if you are working with c sharp and by any chance if you are working with visual basic it will be vb proj one solution can have multiple projects important a solution need not have projects all of same language i can have multiple languages used in different projects that means under a given solution i can have a project in c sharp and another project can be in vb.net and one more project can be in vc++ but under a given project we are supposed to have various others files like we are supposed to have source code and that is supposed to be compulsory with the extension .cs file if it is c sharp and .vb file if it is visual basic 
Likewise, like that in the project only we'll have other files like it can be a resource file. Resource files whether it is C# or VB.NET will have the extension RESX. We can have XML files. We can have config files. We can have various TXT files. We can have HTML files. Various other types of files can be combined together. So what is a project? A project is a collection of resources which together will make an application when built. What we are actually going to do is after creating a project, we are going to build a project. Now what is build? Build basically is of two steps. One is all the source code in the project will be compiled individually and then all these compiled source code is going to be linked to each other. So basically build is an action which is a combination of compiling and linking. So once all the code is individually compiled in each and every source code file and then all the code is linked to each other, what we generally get is a compiled output in the form of exe file which is based on the project name. So suppose let us say my project name is imagine in this case I have taken hello world demo app and if you remember I have unchecked separate directory for solution. So the solution file name and the project file name will be same except the extension. Extension of course will be different. So here the extension will be .csproj. I can delete this. Now when I build the project we are going to get a exe file whose name will be hello world demo app.exe. That's how the name will be for the exe file. Now what is built in the project? Remember it's always the source code files which are built in the project. Of course right now we do not understand resource files but yes these two files are the one which are actually compiled and the binary form of that will be available in the exe. So what ultimately we distribute or deploy on the target machine where we want to run the .NET application what we have developed on this development environment is this particular application. This exe alone we need to give to the client to execute on his machine. We do not have to give all these project files and everything. The compiled version is sufficient. The source code is not required. Maybe yes, in case we are using XML files we need to include. In case we are using config files we need to include. These of course is a separate story which we will need to discuss later. But the build version will have the binary form of source code and the resource file. Hence we do not have to include along with the exe while deploying on the target machine. So I summarize again once more. Whenever we create a new project in a, in a Visual Studio environment, it always creates a solution on top. Under a solution we can have one or more project. Under a project we can have one or more source code files one or more resource file and various other required resources, other different types of files. Now when we are done with our project coding, we are supposed to build the project. Build is an action where we need to compile and link. Compile what? Source code files are individually compiled and then after compiling all the individual files, the code between them will be linked to generate a single exe file and that exe file will have the file name based upon the project name. Now this is the project I have created in studio. Of course you can go to tools. See this font is very small. So in case you want to increase the font go to tools. You will find options and here you have fonts and colors. You can select the font of appropriate your choice and you can set the size also. Like I am changing the size to let us say something like 14 font. Click on OK. So this is the code which is auto generated by studio when I created a project and the file name is program.cs and in program.cs there is a class by name program. You double click here in solution explorer it will directly take you to this class. Right now you will have lot of things here but not much is relevant to us. Most of it we can actually delete and discuss more in detail later. Like right now these using statements we are not going to make use of. So just select them and delete. It's okay. Right now namespace doesn't have much significance though I would not recommend you to delete but right now because it does not have much significance I can take this step of deleting it. And same is the case with this floor one. 
and then we have to indent it i want this to be properly indented the shortcut which we can use for indenting is press control plus k key plus d control k d is the shortcut through which all this code got indented properly so i just undo first control z and then i press control k d it got indented now here is main now what is main we have to understand this if you know c in c also we write main and the importance of main is it is an entry point of an application whenever our application starts it is actually started by the clr common language runtime is the one which is going to launch our application so common language runtime has to find an entry point to enter into the application so the entry point for entering into the application is main it is the main exactly where the program begins starts executing the code in the sequence like for example i am writing now console dot write line and put here something like uh, hello world semicolon it is going to enter main execute this line and now because the code all completes here it will exit main so program starts with main enters main executes the instructions which are given in main in the sequence specified and when main ends the program ends that's the lifetime so main i can say is not only the entry point of the application main is also the exit point of the application main which is in program class here unlike in c you don't see main inside a class you see main it is outside the class but here in dot net everything is inside a class only you cannot write any method outside the class directly every method must be written inside a class because it's an object oriented language so here c in c sharp main is an entry point where the program enters executes in sequence and comes out now we have to run this and see the output what are the options we have to execute this you can go to debug menu here first let us build it so there is a menu build we have the option of building a solution but let me clarify when you build a solution it is ultimately going to build all the projects within it as such there is nothing like building a project solution it is a project only which has to be built so you click on build solution it builds the project see here build started the project has been generated and the output is generated in so and so folder let me copy this in notepad for clarity so the compiled output is so and so location let us understand this d colon is the place d colon windows samples is the place which i created my working folder under that hello world demo app is the name of the application in that there is a bin folder created in that bin debug is created and that is where the exe file is present let's go to now this folder d colon windows app hello world under hello world you see there is a project name you see we have got a solution file now solution file is in the same project folder as the project because at the time of creating the project i have unchecked the option of create separate directory for solution hence both project file and solution file are in the same folder and of course the program.cs source code file also is in the same folder this is some configuration file which again we will discuss later right now obj folder is there this is the place where individual files when they are compiled will be generated i told you individual files are compiled and then linked to each other so individual files which are compiled are actually placed by studio in this folder of course it is not of much use to us we can ignore this folder we can anytime delete this but go to bin under bin will find debug and under debug this is the main file which is of importance this is the compiled output of our project hello world demo app now double click on this see actually the command line window is opening and closing we are hardly able to read the output just keep double clicking so we want to actually execute this from the command prompt so what i'll do is select this folder go to command prompt
we have already copied in the on from copied onto the clipboard so go to edit and paste here so we oh, we have to give cd sorry first i should go to d column and then change to that folder now run the exe hello world demo app.exe you can just press tab the name will automatically come and enter hello world this is the output this is a console based application that's why the output is appearing on console window it is not a gui application so i go back to studio now can can't i execute from studio itself yes actually we can execute from studio itself to execute from studio we have here under debug menu two options start debugging and the other is start without debugging how to use this to just press here start debugging and you see the window opens and goes away we are not able to see the output again so what to do you have the option of using start without debugging click on this the output will stay for us to read and only when you press a key this window will close so yes debug start debugging the window will not stay by any chance if you want the window to stay for just right here console dot read line it will wait for you to press enter before the window will close now now use debug start debugging the window is staying because it is wanting us to press now enter so yes start debugging start without debugging are the two options ideally i would prefer you using this shortcut you can just press f5 on your keyboard for start debugging generally we use start debugging option only when we want to execute the code line by line right now we do not have lot of code so we don't need to use that option alternatively you can simply press control plus f5 that's the shortcut and similar to build you can use f7 or control alt f7 is the shortcut for building it you can also use actually not provided in express edition but the shortcut is working in professional edition you can see that shortcut we can build a project and the shortcut is control plus shift plus b control shift b on your keyboard you can press to build the project alternatively you can simply use the shortcut f7 to build the solution or to rebuild now what is rebuild see not maybe in this case but in real time the projects will generally comprise of something like 20 files 30 files 100 files of pro source code now every time you build the compiler is going to build individual files and that would take time so what studio does is it will build the program and it will have to rebuild that file only if that file will get modified so every time we use the option build like first time let's say when i use the option build all the source code files in the project will be compiled but next time only when the source code is modified and again you use build it will recompile see now i just modified the file i got this too i don't modify and i simply use build i just get successful why nothing is there to modify nothing is there to build nothing will be regenerated directly it got it but suppose some time sometimes what happens is we want studio to forget all the compiled version and do a complete rebuild of all the files irrespective of whether they are modified or not in such kind of situation you'll have to go for the option rebuild solution so all the files in the project will be rebuilt and this is good once in a while so that all the latest files will be always in sync with each other and sometimes actually speaking studio has problem and it doesn't link the code properly and we use the option rebuild so i repeat again once again build by default in routine is good so that in case our project has multiple files only those files which are modified after the last build will be rebuilt but if you are using rebuild all the files irrespective of whether they were modified or not modified will be rebuilt to generate a single exe so you can only build or you can simply say start without debugging where it will automatically build and execute it will do two steps automatically so this is how we develop our first program and execute it 
Now, before I actually close this first program, there are few points which I want to take your attention to. One, main yum is uppercase and C sharp is case sensitive programming language. So, if you put yum lowercase, it is not going to build. It will give us an error. Did not find a static method main with suitable entry point and that is because this main is not matching. So M for an entry point method main must be uppercase. Second, there should be a keyword here static. See if you are writing something in C language, it is as simple as this. In C you would simply write like this, enough. You can just put void and directly in, without class also you can write. You don't even need to put actually these arcs. C program is as simple as this. In C, we don't use console.write line, instead, we use printf. Let's say hello world. So, the equivalent of this in C, in C sharp, we'll have to write all this. We'll have to write a class. We'll have to write any name of the class is fine. What is the importance of it? We will discuss as we move forward. Name of the method must be main, uppercase. In C, it will be lowercase. But in C sharp, it is uppercase. Return type we have mentioned is void. String array parameter. Next video, I'm going to actually explain you what is the importance of this. And then this is the equivalent of printf to print on the console window. We don't need this. So this is the C equivalent of this C sharp code doing the same thing. Now what is this using system? Actually system is the namespace. We are supposed to fully qualify this class name. In such case we should write system.console.write line and then this is not required. Now press control plus F5 our program will execute. But if you do not write this now this class is not recognized. Why? Because we are not mentioning any namespace here. So to resolve that ambiguity, here we have to provide system and system is the base namespace and for everything we need system. So I always recommend you to keep this use system always on top and then write rest of the code. So that every time any class you want to use from the system namespace, you do not have to qualify that by the namespace name. You can directly use the class name like we have done in this case. So let's go back to the notes once again and review everything. Project structure. A solution is a collection of project. One solution can have many project and every project added to the solution can be of same language or different languages. Solution file has the extension .sln. A project is a collection of files which includes source code, resource files, configuration files, etc. A project has the extension .csproj. A project when built two step process generates a exe or dll of course when we select class library template if you remember i have shown you one of the templates available in the new project dialog was class library that time we will get dll as output otherwise we are always going to get for windows application console application exe as the output and this exe is what we call it as portable executable then we went we followed this step file new project selected c sharp on the left hand side console application on the right hand side gave the project name and saved it in some location. This is the code which was generated by studio and I said main is the entry point as well as the exit point of the application. After we have this, we just wrote this extra line and then we build the project. This is the shortcut for building the project. Now to run the project, I showed you two options, start debugging and start without debugging. Start debugging, we'll have to generally use when we use breakpoints. Otherwise, you'll have to write console.read line for the window to stay. And then I showed you the drive in which the output is generated. We can go to command prompt, go to this folder and execute the exe in case we want to. And I already mentioned this. In Visual Studio Professional, we have the facility of specifying the version when we create a new project. So with this, we are now completed with our first C sharp .NET application. Thank you.